uh, recording now. So, um, so welcome, and this is um, uh, this is a conversation with Manny Abrego, and thanks, uh, thanks Manny for um, joining me. And we uh, we were talking about like speech going speech going up and down. And um, actually, when I when I started my uh, when I started doing like um, cluttering videos again, then my speech was kind of at an all all time low because uh, well, I, um, I, li living in Thailand, I don't talk to too many people like uh, like uh, like the speaking English natively, and so I don't have like practice speaking like reg regular, um, and so so I actually thought that was kind of like good. Uh, because it's really hard to actually rec record uh, record cluttering, um, and so, uh, um, so so anyway, I, I I kind of cut you off saying, hey, this is a great point to to start. But um, do you want to? Um, and and hopefully hopefully this hopefully you weren't saying that as oh hey off microphone before we start. Then I want to um, I want to tell you this um, because I thought it was a great um, starting point. But um, um, just because just because I, I noticed that with me like my. So sometimes I think my speech is good. Sometimes I think my speech is terrible, and that kind of thing. So, um, anyway, um, do you mind do you mind talking about what um, like what um, if your speech is good, bad, or 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 what? Sure. So currently, I feel like my speech is pretty bad, um, especially because right now I feel like I've had I haven't been having too many like longer conversations, and when I don't don't tend to have longer conversations, then I feel like my voice is. Uh, like relatively worse than when I go than when I frequently practice having like longer conversations and I feel like recently I haven't really been focusing on having just like either even just practicing by myself just reviewing my voice you know talking to myself in my car where so I've been kind of neglecting that aspect so I feel like currently right now my speech isn't as good as it has been in the past and it's probably at a, at a lower point than it normally is like relatively, and then um, why do you think uh, why do you think that is? Because I've um, I've noticed that with me too, and and I I know that like practice is supposed to make stuff better, but uh, but why why do you think why do you think that is? Well, I think speaking is kind of like a I don't, it's kind of like a skill almost. Like you, you have to keep uh, working on it. If you if you don't keep working on it, then it's gonna get worse. So like you kind of have to like constantly work, work on it and if you do, if you don't do it regularly then you're going to almost forget how to how to how to do things like the right way and mm -hmm. how to uh and, and it doesn't become normal anymore especially for us clutters I feel like we already have trouble speaking so I feel like the more we don't speak it's easier to fall back into bad habits when we do start speaking again so I think that's uh part of the, the one of the biggest reasons and also just because, yeah, you know, we just don't really practice speaking that much. So it's just, it's just hard for us to maintain, maintain that. Cool. Yeah. And, and I actually, um, I've been listening to Daniela. I, um, I think that's how you say his name. Um, Daniela, R R Daniela Rossi, Daniela Rossi. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to do an interview with him. Um, um, later, uh, later this week, but, uh, but he's, um, he, he has stuttering and so he's got a stuttering podcast and then he's, um, he's actually had like two or three, um, clutters on his, um, stuttering podcast. So, so I think he's done like, w well, a whole bunch of episodes and just a few on, on cluttering. So, so his, um, his approach is really interesting. Um, and I don't know how much you know about stuttering, but, um, but basically, like his um, his thing is to embrace embrace your stuttering, and um, and he, and he has this thing called like voluntary stuttering, where you kind of stutter on purpose, um, and and stuttering stuttering and cluttering are just really really um, different uh, in in a lot of ways, and so 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 it's just kind of interesting with uh, with his approach, um, especially with with stuttering is. Um, because uh, because with um, people with stuttering have just a very very high anxiety level, and so like like dealing with uh, um, dealing with that and saying hey like it's 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 okay to keep trying um, is really really important for 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 stuttering. So um, so and and he's written a he's written a really cool book um, too that like talks about his 
um, philosophy. So, so it's, it's just kind of interesting that I've been like reading that and, and, and that's why I'm kind of thinking, um, cause, cause his approach is the way to get better at stuttering is to not worry so much about stuttering. And I, um, I think with, uh, with cluttering, like, uh, like you and I are saying, like, if we don't, if we don't worry too much about it, then our speech gets worse. Mm -hmm. Um, not actually better. So I thought that was, I yeah. That so was yeah, so wow, I just had the thought in my head, but it went away. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, I want to say because uh, uh, because I'm not one. Also, one of the part of the reasons I don't practice my speech as much too is because because I do have the anxiety of of uh, st of cluttering, and because I'm shy about talking, I don't usually tend to be dominant in conversations. So I don't like tend to uh, you know respond a lot in conversations. So I don't tend to practice my my speech a lot so i think that's also part of the reason why i don't practice in conversations as much as i as i should so i think that's one of the habits i need to break is learning how to be more not necessarily dominant but more um just just talk during conversations more and respond more frequently instead of just being like a listener because i tend to be like more of a listener than like a talker so mm -hmm. i need to learn how to break the habit and be kind of well still be still focus on listening but also be on but I'll still focus more on actually responding and speaking during conversations because I feel like that's that's probably one of the important things for developing your your speaking is just practice is practicing more and also just yeah just it just um, it, I feel like it's a hindrance me not talking and me getting better at talking <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, makes sense. So, so what kind of uh, what kind of stuff have you found that um, helps you to be more active in conversations? I think uh, people like directly ask me ask me questions. So, I think what I usually do when people ask me questions is I answer very shortly, instead of giving like elaborate details. I think that's uh, something uh, I need to work on. Is when people ask me a question instead of just saying like a, a few word responses or like a one word response. I need to focus more on just like thinking about what I'm going to say and then like kind of elaborate a detail, like kind of like elaborate more on, on what I'm trying to say and also just uh, say more than just a few, a few words at a time. Yeah. That, um, and that makes sense. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the things that I, um, that's kind of tough for me um, cause I tend to take things pretty literally is when when people ask closed-ended questions but but that they're really just trying to um use them as a like to spur conversation so they're not actually asking me like they're literally literally asking me a yes or no question but what they um the reason they're asking me is because they want to hear like a story so they'll say oh joseph did you have a good day today um and and basically that means hey um, I'm opening this up for you to talk, so you talk now. But but I uh, I just remember like failing all the time at, at that. Um, like yeah. oh yeah yeah my day is fine. Um, so so that's uh, that's something that I noticed is like um, it, and I know, I remember noticing it with one one person like like this person would not ask an open ended question. Um, she she would only she would only ask closed closed ended questions, but. Um, and, and it worked with some people, like, like some people just like took, took the cue that she was um, trying to give and, and would elaborate and tell like how their, how their day went. And, um, but, but like lots and lots of people would, um, were, were like, were like me and like, oh, this is kind of weird. Why is she, uh, why is she asking just super specific um, question? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think uh, I'm very similar in that aspect too. When people ask me how my day is going, I'll be like, yeah, it's fine. And I don't really elaborate more than that. And I feel like I need to, you know, learn to read people a little bit better and know when they're, when they want to know more, actually more about what's going on. And they want me to have like a longer response than just how's my day going. Cause I feel like a lot of people just, even like in daily life, I like, I'll talk to people unless someone directly like comes up to me and starts like having a conversation with me. I usually won't go out of my way to start having like a conversation with people so like someone has to come up to me and start asking me questions before I you know start a conversation with them so someone just like oh how's your day going and I'm like good or, or good morning this like I don't really say more than good morning back so I think a, a thing 
a skill I need to really work on is learning how to uh, start conversations myself because I'm not a good conversation starter, I think. And at least with strangers, with friends, I can start conversations and people I know I can start conversations, but with people who are strangers, I am not very good at starting conversations. And I feel like most encounters I have nowadays are with strangers. So I feel like it'd be better for me to, to learn that skill and how to, you know, just learn how to uh, talk with random strangers more, I guess, normally. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't think there's any like great, um, great, like one, um, one method for that. Um, a couple, a couple books that I read that, that helped, helped me a lot, like from where I was to where I am now was, uh, was Dale, Car Dale Carnegie's book. And then also uh, like, like I went to a three day Dale Carnegie training too. And, uh, and that's all about uh, the, the Dale Carnegie training is, is a lot about like giving, giving public speeches and, um, and then, then Dale Carnegie, uh, how to win friends and influence people. Um, that's his like main um, main book, and and it talks about like how to it, it's basically how to get people to talk about themselves, and um, I always thought because um, I've always been a really good listener, um, uh, maybe because of maybe because of my cluttering, but um, but like one of the things that I realized that I I was totally missing like early on is that just like if you just listen to someone and don't actually like give them feedback that you understand, then, then they don't think that you're a good listener. And so, so um, I remember um, like, I, um, I don't know how many years ago, 10, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, um, I remember a, a few times of like me listening to, uh, or like me listening to someone and, and just really understanding, like really getting what they were um, trying to say. And then someone else who uh, like maybe understood only like 15% of what they were saying, um, but was really like um, em um, empathetic and like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, um, and the um, and the person thought, oh, I'm not, I'm not understanding at all. But this uh, this guy that um, uh, this guy that knows like the tricks or whatever um, is understanding better. And so so I realized that just like listening, um, listening and understanding is only a small part of people feeling like you're actually understanding them. Yeah. Oh, um, um, so, so, so that it, Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. Um, that, uh, that, that, that book's really, really good. And, and it gives a whole bunch of good techniques for conversation. And then, um, Deborah, Deborah Cannon wrote a book called you just don't understand. And, uh, that's, that's about relationships between men and women. But but she also she also talks a lot about like different personality styles, and I uh, I think I I think I've mentioned this before about like turn taking people versus people that talk all at the same time. So so she has like four pages, which which I think is about how shorter chapters are, but but four four pages dedicated to like this really kind of scientific analysis of people that um, people that are turn taking versus people that. Um, talk all at the same time, and um, and and those are just like four of the two hundred pages. Like every um, every page has an analysis of different different um, kinds of people with um, different dynamics, and th um, that was just really really helpful for me understanding um, understanding people better. And, and and like that's one of the things uh, when I'm doing interviews for YouTube. Um, one of the big things that I try and remember is, oh well, if I just if I just sit there and listen the whole time, um, I'll 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 be what I'll, I'll be a good listener in my definition, but the the interview won't go anywhere, and um, and uh, and it'll be just way way more boring than if I like contribute to. So 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 anyway, it's um, I'm. Uh, the whole point of that long-winded story is that I'm kind of empathizing with you. It's kind of it's kind of tough, and and I've I've learned some things, but I'm I'm definitely not an expert on that. I think a part of the reason is also me. Like I like I feel like a lot. I know a lot of people who are really uh, who are really good at talking to like about anything. I mean, they're able to talk about just like about anything, but they're also really good at just about talking about themselves. So I think mm -hmm. like someone like can just talk about like I've noticed like a lot of people who are really like 
like proactively outgoing or like a little bit narcissistic almost like uh, not i don't want to say necess- narcissistic necessarily but they're just really good about talking like about themselves and like you know just talking about like any like like they could talk about anything um but i noticed that they that they, that they really find it easy to talk about themselves where with me like like a lot of people when they ask me questions about myself i'm like really bad about talking i'm really bad about talking about myself because i hate like bragging uh-huh. and when i do and when i do brag i feel like <laughs> i was like i feel like i feel like i shouldn't have done that and i feel like bad for bragging but uh so i'm not really so i don't like and i don't enjoy bragging so i think that's part of the reason why i'm also not that you know that much of a of a great speaker as well because like i know it's uh, yeah like i said like a lot of a lot of really great speakers you kind of have to be like a narcissist like a narcissist almost to be be that confident to like talk about anything and like especially about yourself i, I don't know if you agree with that sentiment or not yeah yeah and it's um well um initially like like i think i think that's i, I think that's certainly how it how it feels and I, um, I remember, I remember feeling that same way too. And then, like when I read, um, when I first read Dale Carnegie's book, and and his book is all about like don't don't be that guy. Um, and when when I first read the book, I was like, yeah, this doesn't make sense because like um, it seems like uh, it seems like this person this person's just talking about themselves. This person's just talking about themselves. And. Um, and yeah, it's it's um, it's it's interesting. I think uh, I think I think sometimes, but 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 I think the I think the people that talk about themselves a lot that um, the the people like um, also do a lot of um, do a lot of listening, and, and they might just do like kind of micro listening, just um, just like oh that's interesting, that's interesting, that's interesting, and and then they talk for. Um, uh, th- then they talk for 15 minutes nonstop after they've like, like made everyone feel good about, oh, uh, this guy listened to me, this guy listened to me. And then, uh, um, then they just talk non, non- nonstop. Uh, th- uh, there's lots of, there's lots and lots of people that talk nonstop and nobody likes them. And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this person um, talking. But, um, but then there's also lots of people that seem like they're talking about themselves for just long, long periods of time. And, um, and I think um, I think it's more that um, I think it's more like making the connection with other people is kind of the secret to that because if if you just if you just talk without like connecting with people first, then uh, then people think you're in the bad category. But if you're connecting with everyone in the room and um, and um, uh, that, uh, that's when that's when people are like engaged and like oh this is an interesting story. Um, and and I think it's more that. They think uh, uh, they're like they're thinking it's an interesting story just because this person connected with them, um, not necessarily because they're like an interesting storyteller. So so it's kind of it, it kind of reminds me about stuff like like health advice or like losing weight weight advice or uh, or other stuff. You can um, you, you can Google um, you can Google like how how do I lose weight and get like seven gazillion different um, methods for um, for for that so um uh, so, so anyway i'm not i'm not really sure what my what my point was yeah well that actually, that actually brings me up to a good thing especially i've noticed that as a clutter i tend i'll tend to like go off topic a lot and i forget to like what my point is or what i'm trying to, to what i'm trying to say in a conversation a lot so like i'll like someone asked me a question and then i'll kind of go off for a little bit and then i'll like forget what my main what my main point was and I feel like that's extremely common with me, especially, I don't know if it's common with you. It seems, uh, does it seem like it's common, a common thing with you or? To, um, and, um, and sorry, um, can you, um, can you ask your question again? Sorry, I see, that's what I meant by my, my converse, my speech is really bad at the moment. <laughs> um, so I've noticed that I tend to, um, go off topic again or go off topic really easily. And I forget the, what my main point or the point that I was trying to explain during, uh, during like a conversation I'm, I'm having. So like when someone asks me a question, I'll, I'll sometimes forget what, I, what I'm trying to say or, or what my point was. I don't know if that's very common with you. 
Oh yeah, and actually, I um, so so at one point, uh, at one point, I suspected that Ellen DeGeneres had um, cluttering, um, and um, and I'm not um, I'm not sure if she um, ha if she did or not, but but um, she she wrote this book called My Point, and boy, do I have one. And um, so, so, so that was the name of the book, My Point, and boy, do I have one. And so. Uh, it was a it was kind of a long rambling tale about um, and, and and actually she wrote like two or three books and I I, I read all of them, um, but um, but but it was just kind of like funny like um, alternate reality thing where she like dog sledded from like California to to somewhere, um, even though California doesn't really have snow to dog sled. So um, so, so so it was um, it, it it was just kind of this. Um, stream of consciousness thing. And, and I, I didn't realize until I saw an interview uh, with her about the book afterwards that, um, that the, point, the point in her book was that she doesn't actually have a point. Um, so so uh, I, I don't know if she has cluttering or not, but, but I thought that was really interesting that she just fully embraces, hey, well, I, I don't have a point. I just, I just say a lot of stuff to try and be funny. Um, <laughs> So, so that was kind of like oddly comforting, like uh, um, especially, uh, especially when I'm uh, um, just just the phenomenon that you're describing of of the like I think I have a point and and it like like it used to just really really bug me when I um, when when I was like trying to make a point and then I felt like I made like sixty percent of it and then the conversation went somewhere else and. Um, and then, um, and then, like, um, I lost, um, I lost what I was thinking about too, and it went somewhere else. So, so anyway, after I read, um, after I read Ellen DeGeneres's book, and I realized, oh, she's, uh, um, she, she wrote this whole point, or she wrote this whole book embracing that she doesn't have a point at all, and she is totally okay with that. Um, it kind of helped me to not get so like, ah, I wish yeah. I, I wish I could, I wish I could just uh, finish, and I wish I could. Um, I, I wish the um, I wish because of my cluttering, I didn't like have the um, everything like go all over the place and lose everyone and um, for, and me forget everything um, too and all, all that kind of stuff. I feel that's part of the reason why I'm very bad at like debating and arguing. So I've kind of realized now I'm always going to lose an argument or debate, even if I even if I'm like completely right and I'm like in the right. Like I won't argue. I'll try not to. I'll try to avoid arguing and debating just because I know I'm going to lose just because I know I'm not going to be able to point everything out correctly because of my cluttering. So I kind of, that's something I, I should probably work on is learning on how to argue a little bit better. And um, maybe that'll help my, uh, my, with my uh, maybe that'll help a little bit, but I don't know if it's, if it's cluttering, that's, that's making me really like that bad. So I think it has something to do with the cluttering for the reason why I'm, I'm very bad at debating. Yeah, and actually, um, you you kind of look a little bit like Ben Shapiro. Um, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you know who he is, but um, yeah, I know who he is. <laughs> uh, but he's um, he's like the best person in the world at arguing. So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so so it's inter it's interesting you bring that up because I um, I basically um, I basically do the same thing, and everyone um, everyone always thinks, oh, you're um, um, you're um, you're, you're like zen-like or elevated and I'm like I don't know it's just because it's just because I realize I lose every argument that's why I'm uh, that's why I don't um, <laughs> you don't engage in, in debates or, or arguments yeah yeah and it's um, like like I don't think I don't think that I have word finding problems um, except for um, except for um, just just like whenever uh, like like a hundred times out of a hundred, when someone says you said this and I say no no, um, I didn't say this I said this. Like a hundred times out of a hundred, I'm the one that's wrong in that. So just whenever, uh, whenever I um, and and I don't know um, I don't know if it's just like uh, like I wish I I wish like one time in my life I'd been right. Like I I'm like oh you said this and. Or, or, or um, I said this. No, you said this. Like, like I just wish that, like one time in my life, I was right. But, uh, but just so far, 
Um, like I said, a hundred times out of a hundred, I've I, I've been the one that's wrong, and the other person's been the one that's right. That yeah, um, yeah, I I said this. So uh, so yeah, I um, what well, and and I don't know if it's really like word finding, but just like that I mess up words all all, all, all the time. Like I was rewatching my latest video on on Mars candy bars, and on my Mars candy bar, I. Um, mixed up the word nougat and chocolate. Um, so, and, and there's a, there's a pretty big, well, well, like in your mouth, they all kind of like mix, mix together, but, um, but like there's a pretty big um, difference between nougat and chocolate because nougat's on the inside and chocolate's on the outside. And how, how does someone um, like, like, I'm not really sure how my mind works in a way that like I can be thinking um, chocolate and say nougat or, um, or vice versa, but but like rewatching the uh, rewatching that video, I was like, oh okay. Um, uh, uh, but then, like, luckily in the next, um, everything okay? Yeah, no, everything's okay. Just okay. Checking. So, uh, Sorry. Um, so, so, so luckily, like in the next sentence, then I said it correct. Like the nougats on the inside and the chocolates on the outside. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah. Sorry, I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, we were talking about how we always lose arguments and how we always fail to bring up our points and arguments and debates. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, um, for um, for me, for me, I just I try to never argue and to um, just I, I I always think well if I argue then I'll lose the argument and uh, there's not really a point in arguing anyway since um, arguing just reinforces people's opinion. Um, I guess I guess if I wanted to like make people more opinionated about something that I think that they're wrong in, then, um, then that could be a good reason for arguing. But, um, but, but, but yeah, that's, um, that, um, that's my philosophy. Just completely give up on all arguing. <laughs> Same with me. That also brings me back to my point uh, or to my other video where I made the people think you're stupid because you clutter. It's because people tend to think if you lose a debate, you're stupid or the person outsmarted you in the debate. <laughs> So if you're always losing debates, people are like, okay, this guy's kind of dumb. You, you can't win a debate, you know, you can't win an argument. So maybe that's part of the reason that went into my uh, decision making for that title of that video as well. So maybe I should have mentioned that, that in that video as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's, that's interesting. I, um, uh, one of the things, uh, one of the things that I think is really funny is um, uh, it, it was on a set, it was on a Saturday Night Live sketch, and this um, this uh, this uh, this guy was just like he was completely he was completely he was completely wrong, and then this uh, this other guy just like totally won the argument, and then uh, and then the guy that was totally wrong um, just said touche. <laughs> and, and it was really, really funny because like, uh, like instead of being, uh, instead of like a normal reaction, he was just like, oh yeah, um, touche. Um, so, so uh, um, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm probably not describing it very well, but, uh, but, but, uh, but, but um, sometimes I use that in, um, in conversation when, uh, when, when like the other person's made like this superior point and I'm saying touche like um, like that we both made like equal points or whatever. Yeah, a lot of times I'll just like stop talking entirely or, or I'll like say like, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll just pretend like I didn't care about the, convert the debate to begin with. <laughs> so that's one of the things I use. Also, one thing I, um, I tend to notice is um, I'll forget to, I'll tend to forget like words, like even though I know the word, I'll, like the word will be at the tip of my tongue and I'll tend to uh, like forget it. It'll be like, it'll just, it'll like be at the tip of my tongue and like, like, and it happens a lot with me. So I don't know if that has to do with cluttering or if it's some other thing, but I always tend to forget like certain words, like at very specific moments and always like leaves me stuck in the middle of like a conversation or when I'm trying to explain things. I don't know if that happens with you as well. Yeah, and um, actually, that's um, I had a uh, I had a way to describe cluttering once, and it was um, it was kind of that when um, 
like, like, cause I think everyone, um, everyone has that feeling of like that, that they have uh, like just, um, just, just the feeling that you described, like, like something on the, on the tip of your tongue. Um, but like, I feel like that all the time, like a hundred percent of the time where we're, we're like a, a non clutter um, that, that might happen like once, uh, once a day or two, two times, a, two times a week. But, um, but yeah, for, um, I think for folks like, like you and me, then it's pretty constant. Happens on a, on a constant basis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then another topic I wanted to bring up today is a topic of, uh, you know, doing other things fast is, you know, for me example, I tend to do other things very fast. So I'll try, I'll tend to do tasks very quickly. I'll tend to eat very quickly. I'll tend to overall, I do something slowly just, but overall I tend to do like a lot of things fast, talking, eating. And there's another one I didn't do really fast. I don't know what habits do you have that you do really fast? And um, so, so I like, um, I like typing and I think I type pretty fast because I, um, I can type, uh, my, my, my typing speed is between 80 and 90 words a minute, uh, which, uh, which isn't like ultra, ultra fast, but it's, um, it's, it's much faster than like most, um, most people. And then my, uh, my, my, my texting speed, because I, um, I use messages uh, without, without predictive text and I, I, I can text about 40 words a minute um, with, um, with that. And uh, which, uh, which like, like predictive text, you can text like faster than you can type, um, especially if you're um, if you're typing or if you're texting the exact same things over and over again, and the um, and you have a good prediction um, app. But um, but but like with non-predictive text, then I think 40, 40 words a minute is pretty pretty fast. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll tend to do the same thing when I'm typing, but I'll, but what I do is when I type something, I'll always misspell everything for some reason, because uh -huh. I'm not focusing. I'm just like tend to type things really fast, and then it's like I have to go back and correct myself. And I think that's sim 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 similar to what I do with my speech is uh, I'll say something really fast, and then I go back to correct myself. And when I type, I do the same thing. I'll type something, and I'll kind of sound how my speech sounds like. So I'll be like, I'll type my password, and it'll be like a few characters wrong. I have to go back and type it slowly. And then I'll have to go uh, type my whatever I'm replying to a comment to someone or a message and I type something like a message and I'm like, okay, I got to go crack that again. And <laughs> so I don't always, I always correct it before I press enter, but it tends to happen a lot where I'll, I'll type a message and it just, there's, there's a few misspellings in there, even though I know how to spell the word correctly and everything. I so I, I have a, I have a technique that I figured out for fixing misspellings. If you want to hear, sure. I, that sounds like an interesting thing to talk about. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, so I, um, I, uh, and 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 we'll get back to the stuff that I do fast. But I just really like. Um, mm -hmm. but, well, I switched from the um, a, a few years ago. Uh, um, I switched from the QWERTY keyboard, like the regular keyboard, to Dvorak. Um, and um, so, so basically, I had to like relearn, um, relearn everything. And one of the things, uh, one of the things that I did, because when I was typing on QWERTY, then um, the way the way that you described your typing is exactly the same way as my typing, like like I misspelled so um, so much, and um, and and I wanted to figure out how to fix that, and I think I have figured it out. So um, one of the one of the things that confused me is that I would misspell my name, and. Um, like it's, it was just like, so weird. Like, why would I misspell my name? Like J O S E P H. I, I should know how to, um, I should know how to, how, how to spell that. But, but I realized that when I misspelled my name, like when I was typing on QWERTY, then I would spell J O S, um, or, um, um, J O E S P. And then I would realize that I made a mistake and then I would go backspace, backspace, um, backspace. Um, S E P H, and so I realized I wasn't actually ever practicing J O S E P H. I was practicing um, that that sequence of J O um, um, J O E um, J O E S P backspace backspace uh, backspace um, S E P H, 
or, um, or, or, or however, like, like whatever it is. But um, so, so I, um, I, I have this mechanical mechanical keyboard that I program, but but I I learned that it, um, there's a uh, regular like Windows shortcut which is Shift um, Shift Delete or con Control Delete um, that that if you uh, um, so, so so basically whenever I typed a word and I had a misspelling, then I would delete the entire word and then type again. Um, so so that way. Uh, that that way I wasn't practicing this weird thing, and um, I was practicing I was always practicing J O S E P H when I misspelled my name, um, and um, and and it was kind of uh, it was kind of frustrating because like like when I start, first started learning Dvorak, then I started misspelling my name, and I thought oh that was just a a QWERTY thing, and then um, and then I got frustrated, and then I figured out okay just um, start practicing like spelling my name correctly. Um, um, J O S E P H um, over and over again, so, and um, until like I get the muscle memory to do to do that. So so anyway, my uh, my approach is all about like getting getting muscle memory for that. So so now my um, um, before um, uh, before I did that. So, so so now whenever I make a mis uh, spelling mistake, whether it's my name or whatever, I I backspace uh, or, or I do control. Um, well, it's like function function delete on my keyboard. Um, but but I think it's control delete on like like a regular Windows that will just delete out the entire last word and then retype that whole word. So um, so so first it's annoying and it slows you down a little bit, but after doing that a few times, then uh, then your misspellings pretty much go away. That's interesting. That's something I should start doing then is instead of doing what because I do that where you where you go backspace 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 and then retype it from there. I need to, I should probably start retyping every single word out that I spell wrong and hopefully that will fix my uh my muscle memory because I also tend to do that with uh well I don't tend to do that with uh with my writing but with my writing I, I just type I write really fast and then it always comes out super like uh inco incoherable um inc it doesn't it doesn't look uh it's not it's not legible and uh so something I need to practice is probably writing my speech or, or writing super slowly so my writing is uh is is uh, legible and i um yeah i think that's a i think that's a good technique um uh, too so um i um i'm i'm trying to think about stuff that i do fast besides um speaking so i think um, oh, um, like like when I was um, when I was contributing to Google, to Google Maps, I um, um, uh, Google. Um, so so um, I think I, I I think I might have mentioned this, but um, th there's this website that ranks like who has the most views in the world of like people um, like because um, you know how you can upload photos to Google Maps. Yeah, um, and so uh, and so Google Maps like tracks how many views that each of your photos get, and then um, and then um, on your profile it says you have like this many uh, this many views. So according to that, um, according to this website, I'm number seventeen in the world of like people that have um, have uploaded photos to Google Maps, mm -hmm. and um, um, I haven't really very heavily contributed for about a year and a half now. Um, because um, I'm kind of mad that they lost 50 of my reviews, um, like, like all my reviews that I wrote that I wrote from five years ago and, and uh, five years ago to 13 years ago. But um, um, but um, but but anyway, um, my uh, my point of all that is that in um, in doing in doing editing on Google Maps, then I think I uh, um, I think I did it too fast or like too much a few times because I got blocked twice. Um, and and I had to like escalate it to Google, and then and then they looked at it and they're like, oh hey, sorry, uh, it was just um, something wrong. So um, so so I think what happened is I like edited um, too too many businesses or like too fast that they're like, oh this uh, this guy can't be like an actual person, it has to be a bot. So we're gonna flag um, we're gonna flag him. So um, so so that happened to me twice, and I'm and I'm sure if I started contributing again, then it's only a matter of time before. 
I accidentally like submit, 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 and um, and someone and um, the Google algorithms like, uh, yeah, this guy, uh, um, this can't actually be a person. <laughs> Yeah, so another thing I tend to do fast as well is like, well, I don't tend to do it as much as I used to is I tend to walk very fast. So like I used to like, wherever I was going, I would just like power walk everywhere. Uh -huh. And, and uh, so now I have to kind of learn to, uh, to slow down when I walk just because I enjoy taking walks now. But uh, before when I was younger, I would, you know, just power walk everywhere. And also another thing I tend to do really fast is I go, I, I go grocery, sh grocery shopping really fast. So like I'll go to the store and go exact go to exactly where everything is where I, where I where I know is where I know everything I I know is want where everything I I want I know is and I'll just go get it and then leave the store immediately. Whereas for some reason other people or I've noticed other people they they tend to like shop very slowly and they look at things like they read labels and like like for long periods of time and or they just like look at stuff and they like spend like a decent amount of time at the grocery store. Whereas I'll spend like 15 minutes at most, probably like closer to five or 10 minutes at the grocery store. Huh. And, um, and that's, uh, that's interesting. Cause in, um, what, um, I think, I, I think one of my, uh, one of my siblings, um, was, uh, like, like saw this, um, saw this TV special on how, um, how to tell, um, how to tell like the under, uh, um, you, you know how they have like undercover shoppers that are like just um, trying to catch shoplifters. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and and this TV special said that the way that you can tell those people is they're, they're just like walking around pretty fast and like randomly putting stuff in their, in their grocery, in their grocery cart. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess when, um, when, uh, when they saw, when they saw that, they, they all just started laughing like, ah, ha, ha, that's, um, that's totally Joseph. <laughs> 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 um, he's, a, uh, he's a he's a mystery shopper in disguise. Oh, so uh, so I uh, well and and everyone like 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 your uh, your perception of yourself is much different than everyone else's perception of yourself. Um, I I usually like like walking up and down like all the all the aisles just to see like what. Um, uh, what there, uh, uh, what uh, what there is, and, and and I think especially especially if I'm hungry, then I um, and I and I don't know what I want to eat, then I just go uh, back and forth and back and forth. But but I um, I think I do it pretty quickly too. Now that I'm thinking of it, because when I when I go shopping with somebody else, then um, like I'm always like out of sync with like how fast they want to walk, <laughs> how fast I want to walk. Yeah, yeah, I tend to do the same thing too. Like I'll walk through every aisle, but I'll always like always do it super fast but i still tend to like focus more on stuff i know i want already but i i do tend to walk through every aisle just because there's at least something i want in every aisle but i'll but I'll always do it super super fast as well while looking at everything and i notice yeah when i go shopping with like my brother or my or my mom or and like they always like take a long time at the grocery store whereas i'll like last like i'll, I'll be in and out like super fast <laughs> Oh, and um, another another thing that I really uh, I really like doing fast is jigsaw puzzles. So um, and and I'm not um, I'm not like ultra ultra fast at jigsaw puzzles like um, compared to like people in competitions or or like like other people on the internet, but like compared to um, like like whenever uh, whenever I'm doing jigsaw puzzles with somebody else, I'm always like like click 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 click. And then, um, and then someone else is like, "Oh, hey, I found this one." Click, 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 click. Um, so, so like, um, and and that's kind of my goal. Like, whenever I do a jigsaw puzzle, I'm always thinking, "Okay, how do I how do I get faster at this?" Because because uh, um, that's like a really cool thing that like I can just totally like wrap my head around and just do it as fast as I can possibly do it. And and I don't have to worry about uh, like, like like with speech. So do you, do you enjoy talking fast? I do not enjoy talking fast. I want to do everything I can not to talk fast. I just so, talk fast out of habit. So why, uh, why do you, why do you not enjoy talking fast? Just because people don't understand what I'm saying. And then it just, uh, I feel like, yeah, mostly because people don't understand what I'm saying. And just because I feel like 
well, it's kind of satisfying to some degree in your own mind because you think because you think you're getting everything you want to say out. But it, it's actually counter when you think about it in the bigger picture. It's counterintuitive because it's um, because you're uh, people aren't understanding what you're saying. So it's better just to say things slow to begin with because people will understand you better if you say it slow all at once than if you say things fast. Say everything fast multiple times. It's it's kind of counterintuitive to your uh, to your main goal, which is getting people to understand what you want to say as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah, makes um, makes sense. So, so for me, um, for me, I really like situations where I can talk fast, and, and and it doesn't really matter very much. And I think I mentioned this before that I uh, I'm I'm always listening for other people's speech rates because, in in my experience, then people that people that talk fast. Um, also generally can understand quickly. So, uh, um, so, um, so for me, it's a little bit different in that when I find someone that talks fast, I'm like, ah, finally, uh, finally I can talk my true speed and they're not, and I'm probably not going to lose this person because they talk fast as well. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah, every, every person I talk to or not every person, not everyone says it, but a lot of people I know, they say, they tell me to slow down and that I talk too fast, but I noticed that when I'm having a conversation with like random strangers or people I don't know well, very well, a lot of them will just like, will like start smiling when I'm talking. And I know they're like, kind of like, kind of smiling because, because I know I'm talking kind of fast and they kind of, they either don't understand what I'm saying or they they think I'm just talking too fast. Like, or they think like, like I'm nervous or something. And that's why they smile. (laughs) Okay. So, um, so, so you're thinking that if you can slow down your speech, then, um, then, uh, uh, th- then it'll just make a lot of speaking experiences a lot better, right? Yeah, a lot more enjoyable and a lot less awkward, I think. But um, what's it called? I think, oh, what was it? NSA? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't like, <laughs> never mind, I forgot, I forgot my point right now. Um, something about talking. Oh yeah, I don't tend to. T- I don't tend to notice when I'm talking. I don't tend to notice that I'm talking fast. To me, it just sounds like I'm talking normally. Like it sounds like I'm talking just as like at the same rate they are. But if I actually listen to myself, like if I like listen to recording myself, it's like way faster than than what they're talking. So like, so like in my head, like when I'm talking, having a conversation with them, it's it's the same rate of speech. Like like in my head, it's we're talking the same the same rate of speech, but. In reality, I'm like way faster than they are. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, that's something that I think is common with um, folks with folks with cluttering is that like like the speech therapist will say, "Slow down, slow down," and um, and then the, the, um, the person with cluttering is like, um, "Nobody speaks this slowly." Um, and, um, and then like, um, and then like you record, uh, like you, you do like a recording, like you're talking about and play back and like, oh yeah, um, actually the, actually the speech therapist was speaking even slower than me, like trying to be like painfully, um, painfully slow. So, um, so, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. So, uh, th- uh, this is kind of, w- w- well, this, uh, this question might sound like kind of pointed, but, um, but it's, um, but, but I don't, um, I, I'm asking because I don't really have an answer e- either, and I think it's kind of tough. But since um, since since you feel that slowing your speech down will make you more um, understandable, then why don't you just slow down your speech? It's it's very difficult to. <laughs> it's, <laughs> like it's like it's like you don't you can't. It's almost like you can't control it unless you're like really thinking about it. And even then it's like, it's, it's still hard. It's just like, you, you, it's, it's like, you're not used to talking that slow. And it's just like, it's like, it's like almost like it's physically it. It's almost like the way like a, a clutter can't like, it's almost like the way a stutter can't stop stuttering. It's like you, you, as a clutter, you, you can't like stop talking fast. If that makes sense. Like it's telling, like, it's like telling a, cl- it's like telling a stutter to stop stuttering, you know? Uh, that's the way I think of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, and that's a uh, that's a really really good um, description. 
and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, that, uh, that is really good. It it, it kind of reminds me of how like it's really like, like for me it's really really difficult to control like any any part of my speech like like it's it's difficult to control volume it's different it's difficult to control pitch it's different it's difficult to control um speed uh, like 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 for me there's just lots and lots of things about speech that it's really difficult to control yeah. So. So, um, so, so I don't. Um, I don't know if it's the same way with you, um, or, or 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 with you if if it's just speech rate that's hard hard to control. But. Um, yeah, for me it's speech rate. It's not only speech rate. I mean, speech rate's a big part of it, but it's also just. Uh, you know, my legibility. Also, it's like my my. I tend to mumble a lot, and I'll, I'll sometimes I won't notice. Sometimes I don't notice if I'm speaking to. Uh, like my volume is low or sometimes I talk too loudly and it just, uh, I can't really can it, like, it just depends on the situation I'm in, but like, I won't notice what, I won't notice that there's a change in my volume, like whether it's low or, or loud, I think I'm just speaking normally. And people, sometimes people will tell me like, you're speaking loudly or you're speaking too low and I don't like see a difference, you know? And, um, yeah, I think a lot of people will tell you to, to change those things. Like, but then you, I think a good response to be like, would you tell would you tell someone who stutters to stop stuttering? It's like kind of the same thing almost because it is a speech disorder, so you can't really control you can't really control it like a like a stutter can't control their stutter, they just stutter. And I think because cluttering is less well known, and a lot of people see it almost like like it's not a speech disorder, like it's just like you're you're talking super fast or whatever. It's um, they don't they don't understand it as much so they just tell you to slow down or they tell you to to fix all these things about your speech when it's when it's similar to the stuttering and that you you can't stop doing that almost yeah yeah and and it's kind of interesting i um so so uh, for me with filler words then then it's it's kind of like that because i think there was a point where i didn't really use um or other filler words very much, but at the point when I started using them, then my speech got much, much more fluid. Uh, like, like for me, the point at which I started saying I'm a lot more, my speech level like drastically raised and and, and that's, a, uh, that's a big part of, of cluttering like for, for some people is having uh, just a whole bunch of filler words. And, and, and it's the same thing of, hey, well, um, Joseph, stop saying filler words. Um, well, my speech disorder that I was diagnosed with, uh, that's the definition of it that I use a lot of filler words. Yeah, I think uh, I used to use a lot of filler words before, but I kind of stopped myself from using them because usually the filler word I would use was like the F word or like, or like the S word. So I would like, so I had, I had to stop myself from like using it. Cause I noticed a lot of people would tell me like, why are you always like cussing like randomly? And it's like, Oh, cause I just got used to saying the F word as a filler word. So I think I should, I think you should probably replace it or try to replace it with like a different word. Maybe. Um, um, I think I used to say like as well too. Like I used to be like, uh, yeah, like that or like this or like, 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 like I used to say like a lot. And it's actually easy since I'm learning Chinese. the the common The common filler word for Chinese is, is naga. Like everyone says that, like the, naga. So like if you notice in Chinese, a lot of people, a lot of Chinese people will say like naga, naga, like when they're when they're pausing. So it's kind of like their um, and it's kind of like a universal like um for them. So it's 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 an easy filler word to to kind of to kind of get used to to get to uh -huh. use, used to using. Maybe I should try that in um, like like intersperse the Chinese filler word into English. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a bad it's kind of a bad word though because because it, it bad word to use because like um it kind of, when you say it in a certain accent it's, it sounds like the like the n word. So uh -huh. I, a, a, a professor at UC at USC actually got in trouble for it recently because he was making a point with that filler word actually, and he used that uh, pronunciation that uh the accent and he got like. And he got like suspended because he, he people thought he was using the n-word so it's kind of a 
you kind of it, it's only one of those words you could use in Chinese or, or non English with non English speakers because it's it, it could it could come off as offensive to um because people could think it it means it means the n word because it kind of sounds like it in certain accents so. <laughs> So, um, so, so I, uh, I think we're almost, I think we're almost out of time, but I, um, I have a, I have a question that it, it's not actually my question. Um, but it, um, it was from, um, it was from this podcast that I listened to and, um, the person, the person on the podcast said, said about, uh, about folks with cluttering that, that a lot of times people ask them to repeat themselves, and um, both um, both both the clutterer on the podcast and 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 me was like, uh, yeah, I I wish that happened, but um, people don't um, like, like that's uh, uh, that's not that, that's not my experience. But but I wanted to I wanted to ask the question to you is, as a clutterer, do people ask you often to repeat yourself? Uh, almost on a daily basis. I think um, I think a lot of people. People, the people who don't tell me to are either pretending like they they heard, they listened, they understood what I said, but every once in a while you'll get the, the person who, who who will be like straight up, you know, with you they'll they'll be they'll be like, yeah, uh, can you please repeat yourself? I don't understand what you I don't understand what you just said. And I think it's uh, yeah, it's very it's uh, it's common, but it's not as common. I think if people were more direct it would be a lot more common, but I think a lot of people aren't very direct. So it's not as common as, uh, as uh, it, it tends to be more common with people, with people you're, you're, you, you know, I think. Yeah. And I think um, probably the reason that I don't get that now is that when I'm uh, with, uh, with my cluttering, then I maze a lot. So I like I, I started with this point, then I go over here, then I go here, then um, then I'm trying to like keep all of these different um, threads of conversation going in like the same um, in the same thing. Like like instead of like a nice linear like this point, then this point, then this point. I'm like halfway through, then branch off, then branch off, then branch off. And so I think that my listeners are like, oh my gosh, I don't understand what that guy said, <laughs> but I don't want to ask him to repeat himself because I don't want to hear that whole like thing over again. So, um, so, so I think, um, I think like my experience isn't, isn't that people ask me to repeat myself just because uh, I'm just because I'm like amazing so much, uh, like, like going in a whole bunch of different directions that, that my listeners more uh, frustrated and confused and, um, and they don't want to um, like they, um, they, um, they might say other stuff like well what's um, what's your point or, um, or um, yeah yeah I, um, I think I um, I think it just more like lose people than um, than that people are uh, are saying hey well I, I Joseph I really want to figure out what you're talking about um, say that again yeah I tend I tend to do that a lot too um... But also, uh, for when I have like, I think I tend to get it more when I have like shorter, like shorter things I'm saying. So if I see like like a one or two sentence thing, they'll people will ask me to repeat myself a lot more often. Whereas if I say like a longer, whatever, people will be like, okay, and like dot 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 dot, and then <laughs> kind of just like acknowledge it, but like not really understand what I said. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so that's, um, that's good. Um, so, so, um, one out of three, uh, one out of three clutters answered that question. Yes. Um, people ask, ask, um, uh, so, so anyway, that's, that's one of my new survey questions to ask, um, people. Um, so, so anything, um, uh, anything else you can think of for, uh, for, for this video? Uh, nothing much. It's the new year. So I guess one of my new year's resolution is to focus more on my cluttering. And I say that every year. So it's, I don't think it's going to be any different this year. Uh, but hopefully I, I, I really make the change this year and really focus on developing my speaking skills and really focus on tackling, you know, my cluttering parts of my cluttering that are, that I can tackle 
and focus on the things that I can change. Although, you know, you can't, there are things that I can't, I can't change or can't affect that I can always work on the things that I can change and affect. So if you are a clutterer, then I urge you to do the same as well. Cool. Well, um, thanks. Um, thanks very much. And, and that's a awesome inspirational, um, message for, uh, for the new year. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. It's always good to, to be on. Yeah. And always great to talk to you too.